one from the left field. It's great. Uh, Gwen Levitt. Is, is anybody doing research on perhaps finding some as yet unknown way of harnessing that carbon and turning it into something useful? Yeah, I'd remember that question, yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Francisco. Um, my question is that Obama's um, recent <coughs> proposal, a uh, suite of regulations he's announced, is being praised by a lot of people as being um, ambitious. But I understand it's only a 32% uh, decrease of emissions from a 2005 baseline. What would the, like an ambitious target that would actually keep uh, the rise of temperature below 2 degrees would actually look like? What's the necessary emission level cuts that the US need to make for that to happen? Um, you know, there are some soda companies, I'm not uh, going to quote name, who use CO2 in their process. And, and uh, some of the bubbles you see in some sodas are coming from a recycling of, of CO2 uh, coming, in some cases, from industrial uh, activity. But the amount of CO2 you can recycle and put to good use if putting CO2 in soda is, can be qualified that way, and that, I leave that to your judgment, um, is, is extremely limited, actually. If you, if you look at the uh, 40 billion tons of CO2 that we emit globally every year, it would be extremely hard uh, to do something useful and to have the space uh, to, to, to put that CO2 um, uh, on, on, on a larger scale than a few fraction of a person uh, every year. So yes, there is some work on that, but uh, it's not going to solve the issue uh, at all. Um, now, on, on the question on the, uh, the US plan, uh, I'll unfortunately give you my standard answer. Uh, being the IPCC vice chair and engaging the IPCC when I speak, uh, I cannot, because this is all out of the mandate of IPCC, comment on individual country policies. Uh, I can, other, uh, however, point to the fact, again, that if we want to uh, um, uh, respect the two degree target, which has been decided by policymakers uh, internationally more than five years ago now, uh, what is needed, and this was recognized even by the G7 recently, what is needed is to reach before the end of the century uh, a state in the uh, world economy where the global emissions are brought to zero or even less to zero. And that would be global emissions brought to zero or less than zero, I repeat, because that's very important, before, even well before the end of the century. So what each country have to ask themselves uh, in the run-up to Paris and after Paris is how their efforts uh, matches that pathway, the pathways that would lead the global emissions to zero in the coming 85 years. But my statement is a global statement and not a statement on a particular country. Kevin DeBray, uh, Centre for Global Studies. I wonder if you would like to address the question of nonlinear change, which I don't think you figured in the, in the slides. <coughs> this time in the AR5, and identified nine potential areas, one of which obviously methane clathrates up in the northern latitudes. Uh, because the, the peer review mechanism of, of the IPCC means that it's uh, a number of years, so the AR5 2013 peer review probably, or well, the evidence probably kicked off around 2011, 2012, um, and that's three years since, and some of the Russian and Alaskan scientists are reporting back on the MIPA reports coming out. Do you really think it is realistic that 196 nations in Paris in December can agree on reducing emissions sufficiently to reach the target? I'll answer. Just take two, I will answer that question. 
Non nonlinear process. Um, well, actually, nonlinear process have been uh, discussed uh, in, in all, I, I believe, since uh, the first report in IPCC. I mean, there are other IPCC authors here, so they're welcome to, to comment and, and complement what I'm saying. But uh, I think really that AR5 is not the first report where nonlinear uh, process have been discussed. Um, but uh, indeed, methane is uh, um, methane emissions for permafrost melting or, or or sudden changes in the Gulf Stream uh, dynamics uh, have been discussed uh, in in IPCC reports and 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 could uh, could um, provide some some surprises. Um, now. On, on, on the methane emissions, uh, I think we have to, to, from permafrost, we have to be a bit cautious because it's not because one paper uh, came after the IPCC uh, publication and go, goes in, in one direction uh, that uh, we can immediately draw a conclusion uh, from, from that single paper. That's actually the, the beauty of, of the IPCC process, is that it, it assesses uh, the, the, the range of, of uh, scientific information, not on the basis of a single paper, but uh, of a, a number of papers addressing a similar subject and tries to, tries to uh, develop an informed uh, assessment, an informed, informed scientific opinion uh, on balance. On, 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 on what the issue is about. And uh, on methane, uh, the last report said we, we, it might be uh, a big issue, but we need to be careful because we don't know very well what are the quantities of methane stored in, in, the, uh, in the soil. Uh, and uh, we, we know even less about the, the speed at which it, the, that methane could be released. Uh, in a warming uh, in a warming world, because the processes uh, are not very well known, and it's not because you have uh, you know single point observations of a few bubbles of methane, uh, which might be very visible, especially if you put a match next to them, uh, that you can draw conclusions uh, that are solid uh, about that. So yeah, it's a point of attention. Uh, and I'm sure it will receive more attention in, in, in the next report because more information will be, scientific information will be available, I hope. Um, but right now, I'm I don't think we know much more in one direction or another than what we knew uh, when AR5 was written. So, yeah, it's, it's um, a point of attention. But um, maybe the last comment I'd like to make on that is the, those methane emissions is, is not something we can have direct control on in any case. So yes, it's interesting, but what we know is that what would favor the, rele the potential release, the possible release of those big quantities of methane if they exist, is something we have control on. And these are the anthropogenic, the human emissions of CO2, methane, and, and other gases that we control. And, 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 and so let, let's, let's deal with those emissions because the lower those emissions will be, the less uh, the probability for that other methane in the uh, Siberian permafrost, etc., uh, will be released. So we have to work with that question mark, but uh, there's nothing more we can do today. Now, is it realistic? Uh, to have an agreement uh, in, um, in, in Paris at the end of this year. I will amend your question first, if you, with your permission. <laughs> but I will get to, to the other part of the question in a second. And, and yes, I think it is. I think it is. It is realistic uh, to have an agreement at the end of the year. Now, of course, if I amend your question that way, you are very frustrated because it's not the question you asked. You asked you ask whether uh, is it realistic whether that agreement will, will really satisfy the, uh, the need to decarbonize the world economy before the end of the century to stay under two degrees, etc.? And there, I am probably, I am not, not able to be as optimistic that that agreement, as such, limited to what will be agreed in Paris, will de deliver that. But I think it's very important to have an agreement at the end of this year, even if that agreement doesn't deliver everything to stay below two degrees, because 
on the basis of that new agreement, hopefully a global agreement where, with global participation and with sufficient, sufficient fairness and equity in it so that it's perceived as fair and, and accepted by everyone really, it's very important to have as a basis to go further unfortunately in future climate negotiations. So sorry for the climate negotiators in this room but they know it already. Climate, uh, the, uh, the Paris meeting will not be the last meeting. It will be the, f the first meeting again of a new series uh, that will be used, that will have to be used to, 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 ratch, to ratchet up, do you say that, uh, the, the agreement because I, I'm optimistic there'll be an agreement, but I'm not very optimistic that this agreement will be enough and it will need to be uh, reinforced with more ambition, more components, more uh, participation, more verification, whatever, in the future. 